Now, this next question comes in from Stacy Luster, and he's curious if I've ever tried to live in Linux for a month. And the answer is, no, I've never lived in Linux for a month, but I have tried to get there uh, in the past. My first attempt was back in probably the mid to late 90s. I think I was trying to get uh, Slackware installed and operating on my PC, uh, because at the time I was first getting into the internet and I would log into this Unix box with a terminal command, did a whole video on that, and I wanted to get that experience on my own computer and have a more advanced operating system running versus Windows 95 or 98 I was running at the time. Uh, but I couldn't get it to work. I got it to kind of boot up, but all the drivers didn't work. My modem and serial port didn't work, and it was such a pain to try to get everything uh, connected and working. Uh, things have gotten a lot better over the years. In fact, Ubuntu now, I think, is excellent, uh, both at hardware detection and just its overall look, feel, and polish. You can just download it right now and try it out. They've got a live CD version that will let you experiment a little bit with it to see if it is going to be good for you or not. Uh, so they've made some tremendous gains, I think, in making Linux a lot more consumer friendly, but it's still not quite there uh, because what happens is that if your drivers don't work, um, getting them is really difficult, especially for some of the Wi-Fi adapters that are out there, uh, especially for some of the other unique hardware you might be trying to use. It gets a little tricky to uh, get this stuff working for general consumers, which I think Windows does a lot better at the moment. But Linux is making some significant inroads with consumers through Chrome OS, and they don't even know they have it. Uh, and that's what I think is so brilliant about it. So, of course, Chromebooks now are making major inroads into the education market. Uh, my school system and many others now issues Chromebooks to just about every kid in the school system. So you can think about the install base here of Chrome devices all running Linux. And now that they're uh, doing their Crostini container system where you can actually install open source Linux apps on your Chromebook and run them like any other application, uh, that is going to, I think, create tremendous opportunities for the open source community and perhaps a lot of new application ports coming over from Windows and Mac as well because now you've got a huge install base of people eager to uh, maybe replicate something they're missing on Windows or Mac and there's probably some way to make this work financially for a lot of these foundations and commercial operations. And again, I think Chrome OS really is kind of the entry point. And this might spur other manufacturers to start bringing out their own Linux operating systems or bringing Ubuntu along or something to get wider commercial adoption. Because really that's been the missing piece is hardware manufacturers marketing these things to consumers. And it looks like Chrome OS is really the first Linux operating system to be successfully marketed to consumers in that way. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on it and see uh, what happens. But I am uh, very eager to see how this kind of plays out because I really think Chrome OS now is a third competitor uh, to Windows and uh, Apple, at least so far as consumer operating systems are concerned. This channel is brought to you by the LON.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.